What's up guys, this is just going to be a reading for those that resonate, uh, a reading for those that are tuned in, um, feel free to stay, this is not in particular to any sign, um, this is just kind of a check-in, uh, a Friday check-in at the time of this recording, but it's also timeless, so feel free to apply it accordingly. Um, I'm looking at the astrological alignments here, seeing what's going on. Um, guys, as always, reach out for a one-on-one -on -one reading. Comment, like, share, subscribe. In the very least, let's get this run and gun banner uh, at the top of the charts with your help. Okay, the sun's in Virgo. Um, still an analytical energy until the 22nd. Uh, the expression of, it could be over uh, analysis, paralysis, or maybe even falling back into the old regime. Spiritually, it's a test or a lesson to see if you truly uh, can remain objective, a la the high priestess. Okay, so you may find yourself worrying about certain things that you've already outgrown, uh, in which case, life is actually trying to see if you're still interested in these things and, and really what is what it is revealing is that you're actually still interested in uh, the old regime uh, the old value system that you've been conditioned it's almost as if when we're born there's a table in front of us and immediately there are objects placed and we're taught the value of it um, and then it's only when we're older that we are able to look away from the table and see everyone else's values and the values of the collective and automatically we mix and match and compare and uh, essentially what we're told is that what we have is not enough which is the, the great lie, the ultimate lie of this existence. Um, but thankfully there is spirituality which tells you that everything is right here and right now. Uh, cease to conceptualize yourself as a being with problems and thoughts and feelings and emotions and the more and more you do not feed uh, the conceptual mind body feeling narrative melodrama that we've constructed as our lives the less you become a receptacle and a retainer for these highs and these lows um, yes you'll still experience them but they won't suffer the drama of the added narrative or the added interest okay which I think is a it's a very uh, healthy tool actually um, <clears throat> so the Sun being in Virgo to tie it back to you know uh, over analysis paralysis you can basically cut the head off of the snake by no longer feeding into the worry say you wake up feeling worried or anxious that energy needs you to feed it a narrative in order to continue perpetuating it but you could essentially just ignore it or not feed into it not overanalyze it because sometimes our brain wants to overthink something um, but if you stifle it and starve it then it'll be forced to create another reality, another neural pathway, and that's how your reality expands and opens up, is you're no longer doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so this is how these subtle energies, like the butterfly effect, they say one butterfly can start a hurricane with the flaps of its wings, you know, metaphorically, subtly these neural pathway energies in your brain, when you no longer feed them by worrying something or creating a narrative for the worry feeling uh, or whatever comes first, um, the chicken or the egg, the point is is that you know you're still dealing with poultry, you know, so uh, you know avoid that. Go go uh, vegan, so to speak, uh, uh, not literally but metaphorically, away from the mind body. Uh, concept of self narrative yes for practical purposes we keep it like a driver's license or whatever but essentially it only exists in your mind we, we come across however many people we do in an, any given day and we don't know anything about them but what they're at presently most people are harboring stuff from the past so 
um, the way, the quickest way to achieve spiritual enlightenment is to be present and, and self-inquire and be self-aware. Uh, that's what we do when we meditate is we sit in, in source, which is, uh, it has no condition. It's not perceivable. Hence why it exists as the limitation of, uh, you know, a human's capacity to uh, observe. Uh, which is why it's empty or black or nothingness or the void or vacuum or whatever. That's the fiber behind all phenomenal reality. That's the backdrop, the stage by which all phenomenal reality can exist. Um, moving down the line, the moon is in Scorpio. So emotionally, you might be triggered or attached to feel, to want to get to the truth. And sometimes in society, we've conditioned or taught uh, each other that the truth is fear and the truth is this uprooting revelation that's going to destroy the world and the planet and you know COVID and all this Th these are just melodramas of the egoic mind and we feed into it that's how when you have um, you know some sort of um, um, you know, single symptom, and when you give it a narrative, then it becomes something bigger uh, in your, because of your mind, because you're feeding it uh, the the energy of awareness and attention and consciousness. That's, that's how every, everything works fundamentally. Okay, um, that's why you know I, I believe the term is hypochondriacs, where they think every little thing is uh, you know cancer, or every little thing is disaster they think they're always sick or something like this uh, those are all um, kind of uh, misfirings of the mind and and I could very well tell you as well that uh, you know in regards to uh, how the news cycle perpetuates terror and fear uh, you know all of these things uh, that we feed into are merely just giving energy to those low vibrations that exist in this reality but uh, we can essentially starve them and that's how we change ourselves that's how we that's why they say work on yourself first and foremost we could change the planet um, as a result but it, it'll take it's going to take generations and generations of enlightened beings to truly get on board here so I think eventually it's the kind of spiritual wave that's going to overtake this genetic survival uh, narrative that we've been taught where it's just you know uh, selfish genes so to speak competing to perpetuate or people ignorantly or blindly you know starting families and not having a plan or trying to fulfill projections of Disney princesses and their Prince Charming and all of you know the the kind of leash or the rope of uh, indoctrination uh, has been held um, at a very young age by uh, those that are trying to create an image of, uh, you know, what life should be as opposed to what life currently is, uh, as it is. Uh, and the irony there is that if you allow people to be as they are, typically people are good, but it's only when we kind of over generations feed and feed into the negative instincts and characteristics that uh, that becomes the kind of prevailing uh, expression of, uh, of uh, humandom, uh, humanhood, um, personhood. So um, that's how the, the battle is first and foremost within uh, ourselves. Um, but we can help others to understand um, to, to an extent. Uh, moving right down the line, Mercury in Libra. So Mercury is about communication. It's about uh, intellectualization. Libra is about balance, harmonizing of the scales, making sure that the mind is not running the show. The automatic worrying survival mind is not running the show. It does not care about your happiness. Your genes do not care about your happiness. They want to keep you small. Okay? They want to keep you safe so you can just procreate and that's it. You have to, as a spirit, as an entity, as a self-aware entity, um, become familiar with this game of the mind-body, where it's always looking to cause a problem, or always looking to, okay, and once you understand that, then uh, life becomes um, something different uh, 
uh, as opposed to the old regime by which we kind of just exist and think things are normal, think that, you know, our identities of self are, are uh, really a thing, you know. Uh, in order to buy a ticket into the arena of personhood, you have to limit yourself from, from being everything and all things conde condensed down to just this uh, stage play of uh, being this one person. And really the light behind all of this is universal uh, conscious energy, which is condensed into uh, this human experience. So don't play small because you're, you're, uh, you're eternal, you're timeless, okay? Um, moving down, Venus and Scorpio. Venus is about love, desire, relationships. Scorpio, again, it's a very sexual element as well. People could be triggered around this time until October 7th. Um, Scorpio typically is about the fantasy and the, fa the facade. It's about the light show as opposed to the actual substance. And this is not throwing any shade to a astrological Scorpio, but Scorpio does play into sexual taboos and fantasies and, and our projections of, you know, what's the nitty gritty underneath all of the you know, surface level stuff. Um, so this might be coming to light here with Venus and Scorpio, but again, if you know that these are all just projections and shadow boxing of the mind, body, egoic self, then you can um, enjoy the ride and know that it's just a ride and it's not serious. Because everything that you are is enough already, whether you're in a relationship or not within relationship. Um, or whether something's going good with family, friends, or work, or whether something's not going good. You understand that it's just the up and down of the ride. And you don't take things personal. Again, a la the high priestess. Um, Mars and Virgo is about action, analytical, detail-oriented action, planning for the future, saving, stowing away your acorns, um, you know, for a rainy day possibly. Jupiter in Aquarius, this is expansion in technology and yet discipline in technology and futurisms with Saturn in Aquarius as well. Jupiter's expansion, Saturn is uh, lessons learned and restriction and discipline. So especially with like the cryptocurrency world or the NFT world, um, you know, reach out to me if you want to learn more about that. But uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of trial and error and a lot of learning. You know, some say that they, there are huge, you know, they call them whales, people that have trillions of dollars or millions of, or billions of dollars invested in certain sectors of cryptocurrencies or NFTs, uh, as well as the stock market. So it can be manipulated at a whim. Um, so it's kind of like a second uh, instinct to be able to navigate that uh, and know when to pull your money out, know when to sit on it, know when to not take a loss that's pretty much the essence of uh you know uh cryptocurrencies and and stocks and nfts is knowing when to get out of the game okay the the, the hardest part is to remain disciplined and know when to kind of sit on your winnings and your earnings and not keep on playing more and more and more because uh this too is a game and it's feeding off of it's playing off of your greed and your and your incessant want for more and more and more so in a weird spiritual way, you know, the stock market and cryptocurrencies, it is it is burning you at times because it's teaching you self-discipline. So you don't keep on putting your hand on the stove, so to speak. So this too is a spiritual uh, uh, opportunity or stepping stone, okay, to learn from. Uh, it may not be necessarily stock markets or cryptocurrencies in your world, but maybe something to do with um, technology or groups of people, or because this is all the sector that Aquarius rules is uh, humanitarianism, groups of people, the future, technology, um, philanthropy. Uh, there's all spiritual or karmic lessons um, uh, in these different sectors for us to learn uh, about. Um, Jupiter in Aquarius until uh, December 28th of this year and Saturn in Aquarius till 2023. Okay, so um, Saturn and Aquarius till 2023. I think there's going to be a lot of pullback and restrictions uh, with, you know, cryptocurrencies and the, and the NFTs and all that stuff. Because right now it's like the wild, wild west. 
uh, all of it's like kind of unregulated. Um, that's why you see a lot of like stuff going down with the SEC and uh, you know XRP and you know people kind of fighting for for trying to uh, have a strategy plan uh, towards uh, these new markets and new means of commerce. With Uranus and Taurus, man, I keep on banging the drum. This is a window until 2025 for Uranus to plan a rebellion, shock and all, to, uh, you know, do something big uh, with Taurus. Uh, this is uh, how we make our money. This is material possessions, finances, as it's ruled by Venus. So expect a lot of surprises with Uranus and Taurus until 2025. Neptune in Pisces is basically dreaming up the future. Dream a little dream. Okay, this is about. This is also about fantasy and the under and the underworld. Excuse me. Um, harmonizing, going with the flow. Um, Pluto and Capricorn. This is death and rebirth and transformation as to what we're known for uh, and a change in power. Capricorn is tenth house public image. Um, what you're known for, masculine energy. Here, Pluto's death and rebirth. Uh, Pluto's in Capricorn until 2023. So it might be that you're changing careers, something of this nature. Um, let's go into the tarot really quick and see what wants to come out. Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light. Highest possible messages at this time. Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light. Highest possible messages at this time. Guys, just wanted to run through the planets because I haven't really checked in on them in a minute. So uh, if you're just interested in the tarot, uh, I appreciate you uh, and your patience until we get to this point. Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light. Highest possible messages. Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light. Highest possible messages for those that are watching. If uh, you choose to have them resonate with these messages. And I'm looking at the computer screen in the background, so apologies if you just see me looking off, looking at the planetary alignments. I like to use tarot.com. Okay, I've used them for quite some time now, even before I started reading tarot. Um, they have a bunch of cool uh, features. Okay, Spirit of gratitude, joy, love, and light, highest possible messages. Guys, again, please subscribe, like, comment. There are a lot of tarot channels out there, and uh, we want to grow um, ours together, our community. We want to do something different. Okay, coming out of a crossroads decision with the Two of Swords in reverse. Um... Sorry, someone keeps on messaging me. Uh, three of Wands in the reverse is feeling as though there's an opportunity for travel not on the table or an opportunity in general coming off of the table. Um, Six of Pentacles in reverse is lack of fairness, equality, reciprocity, balance of giving and receiving. Um, could be especially in regards to resources here. Feeling like something's not growing in or coming in. Uh, maybe even thinking about walking away here. Um, someone is being asked to be emotionally available and receptive. Poverty consciousness moving forward with the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles always asks you to go within, trust grace, trust the ebb and flow of things, trust the meditative nature of things. Not to overthink and over worry and over categorize as, you know, either not having enough or not being enough. These people who are suffering outside of this church window in the cold just need to go in for resources and warmth. So that could be a metaphor for uh, a resource that you're not utilizing. Maybe you feel like you have to do things the harder way uh, or the egoic way. Okay, something to keep in mind here. Uh, someone feels off balance in regards to uh, being able to pay bills, possibly even um, maybe they're unemployed. Uh, they're, they, they, they have their venture, they have their side hustle, but uh, maybe it's not uh, turning out 
gains uh, in which they hoped it would. I think that there is still a lot of grace in this situation. I think someone has been able to still persist or continue, whether it's been unemployment or assistance from friends or family. Maybe if you're resonating with this, or maybe your relationship has been able to persist somehow um, by the grace of a higher power or the grace of all of your lessons and learnings over a, over a lifetime, essentially. Um, all right, let me put this on pause. Guys, if I don't return, I'm going to leave this as is, but I might put this on pause. I'm getting a call one second.